I think you get the picture, I think it's half the story. Hold on, hold on. We've got to get people to stop talking. Tom did not travel here. He's very disappointed. So this is his talk, uh, and I'm just pushing buttons here. So a lot of you are probably aware, in the North Pole of Saturn, there's this hexagon. It doesn't show very well in this picture. i got better pictures. Voyager first found it, the two Voyagers, about 30 years ago, and then the Cassini satellite has done extensive pictures of it. So here's another picture of it. This is in 5.1 micron radiation. The hexagon is basically a structure about 26,000 kilometers across. It rotates with the planet, and it's between 74 and 78 degrees latitude on the planet. And the right at hexagon is, is defined by absence of storms. So part of this is storms, and part of it is, is absence of storms. And here's a cross section showing the velocities. Um, velocities um, up to about 150 kilometers per second, or meters per second. And there's a peak at 76, and reduced areas about two degrees off the sap. Now here's something that was done as an attempt to explain the hexagon. So someone took some instabilities and came up with this picture. Um, I think what Barry's done is a lot more to the point, and I'll, I'll show you. One thing Saturn is electrically active. It has a magnetic field just a little bit less than the Earth. It's also a strange field. It's got some um, dipole and some uh, quadrupole moments. Um, it's not really understood very well. This paper that Barry has is a conjecture. It's not based on um, experiments, not based on analyzing, uh, but just an attempt to explain why we have a six-sided structure in space. So. He's looking at the Earth, where we have Birkeland currents coming into the polar region, or the aura. They're, they were found by the FEMA satellites, and they've got very high currents, in excess of 100,000 amps. And they're rotating very rapidly, one million um, meters per hour. So his suspicion is that a similar phenomenon happens on Saturn. So that's the next step. Well, I'm sorry, there's one more step. Barry needs to find a means of explaining how the currents would create the vortices that create the six-sided hexagon. And once that's determined, then we need to twist NASA's arm to say, send a satellite up there and look for these vertical currents. That would be a phenomenal success to show that we can explain this really strange phenomenon. Good luck to us all. Now, there's some math here, and by the way, this paper, except for one minor correction, um, is ready to go on the web. It'll be up soon. You can all look at it there. Uh, and then we'll post in the proceedings when we get to that point. So, he looked at um, epitrochoids and hypertrochoids. So, we have two circles large one, radius A, and the small one, B. And if you have a point on the circle, a small circle, as it rotates around, that red point will follow this pattern right here. If the pattern is, if the point is outside the circle, then you get this pattern here. And if the point is right on the radius, it will line up right on the circle. The hypertrochoid is the same thing, but the disc rotating is on the inside. Now here's the mathematics, and let me explain. X H T should be X subscript H for hypertrochoid. So it's a, the X is the value as a function of time, this equation. And the you put in wave numbers to make this work. Um, six and six gives a nice hexagon. So he 
have that pattern six, you get this pattern here, which is pretty close to a hexagon. Now, if you do a pair, one inside and one outside, the epitrochoid and the hypotrochoid, you get these two hexagons. And the shape is, I think, pretty close to a hexagon. The channel width here is, in, is not an independent variable. Yeah, pass around. So here are pictures of, of Saturn, the actual satellite pictures, with the um, the two structures, the um, inner and outer, hyper and, and epic trackways, superimposed. We have two different pictures here. I don't know what the difference is in the two pictures, but you see that matches pretty well. This is just some information on the atmosphere of Saturn. It's mostly uh, hydrogen and some helium. Um, surface pressure, a thousand bars, a bar's atmospheric pressure. So it'd be difficult to land on Saturn to move about. Uh, the day, 10.6 hours. Um, the hexagon rotates with the uh, planet. That's what we see in, in current measurements. And how long it's been there? Well, we first saw it with Voyager 30 years ago. It's probably been there for eons and eons. So if you take the two vertices together, you can get uh, currents and you can have situations where they're bucking, locking, and he thinks that the two working together in the hexagon. That's conjecture. What's, what's missing, what he needs to work on, or maybe you can all help him, is to find the connection between electrical currents that we don't ha have not measured in creating these vortices. And here's a picture, assuming that six-sided um, structure showing currents at the low points. This is um, showing the uh, storm tops can be up to 25 kilometers. They're dark. The light areas are where there's an absence of this. They're warmer features. This is kind of putting them all together. The two, two different pictures of the um, actual hexagon from space. Um, one infrared, far infrared. The other is, is showing the, um, the generation of the vortices picture at the top, and then what the currents would look like in the cross-section of the speeds. Barry's conjecture here is that Berkman currents imposing on the auroral region are causing this. That there's no mechanism worked out yet. And if anyone wants to help him with that, find a mechanism but those oral currents can create these vortices, that would be great. Because until it gets that connection, there's no point in looking at any, if there's any actual currents up there. Um, this is a little information about the um, magnetic field of Saturn. Um, it has both quadrupole and octopole moments, but it's not a simple field, as, as you can see by this. So, the top, he said, it's unlikely that electro vortices impinge on Saturn would just happen to exhibit this uninfluenced and stable wave number. It's more likely, he said, there's exists a coupling mechanism. That's the next step, is to find that coupling mechanism, which is basically, I would say, some theoretical physics. And here's a, a conclusion. Here's the picture. On the right is a picture of Saturn superimposed with Darius calculation. On the left is someone just taking some uh, shear, you know, to get uh, currents. When you have shearing, you'll get these eddies, and you come up with a, a decent picture, but I think Barry's got a much clearer means of, of getting at this. Now, how do I get my other?
can get it. It's there. It's there. That's all. Um, this is Barry's next job. He doesn't know we're going to tell him that's his next job. He explained this. To my knowledge, there's only three structures like this. We have the hexagon on Saturn, this red star galaxy, and there's a similar one that's not quite as well defined as this. I did a little work on Google and came up with this, and someone has got some explanation of cones and, and motion and so forth that possibly explains this. I don't know, but um, we, we've got our work cut out ahead of us. Oh, um, Sorry, could you explain just what we've seen? Is it, this is, is it if, you Google, if you Google red star, red you X star, star. you get this. I mean, it blows my mind. Yes. Everything is ellipses and circles and so forth, and here we just have the hexagon on, on Saturn, and this has been known for some time. You don't remember the name of that um, stellar object, that cosmic object? Okay. I, I Googled it. I just put in, I knew this existed, so I put in red, red square. star, <laughs> something like that, galaxy, whatever it is, and popped up. On, on the second slide of the PowerPoint, I counted eight points, not six. Yes. <laughs> I'm not really qualified to answer any questions because I didn't do this paper. I just, um, I, I clear it with Barry that it's a conjecture. It's not really a research paper, but it gives you a starting point for trying to explain this really unusual phenomenon. I'm sorry. Pell? Do you know any other enigmatic shapes, or does anyone in this well, room know? Well, I'm aware of three. The hexagon, this picture here, and there's another picture like this, but it's fuzzy. Where's that? Third one. If you, if you go on Google to find this, you'll find the... You'll find the, you'll find the I get this one, but the third one you said is... Um, they're hey, let's, I, I didn't well, make a let's copy. Let's put the PowerPoint back up. Right. So what? They're hexagon structures that may be electromagnetic, but <clears throat> which uh, question? Which one did you? Uh, which one did somebody who had a question about? Pal? Question about the other enigmatic shapes in nature, other than the hexagon and the red star they showed. I mean, if you see one or two examples, it makes me suspicious there got to be more. Yeah, on Mars, on the surface of Mars, there, there are these, sur these hexagons. Are there? Oh, okay. It's got eight points. One, two, three, four, well, five, six, seven, eight. eight. Yeah. Oh, that's one, two, three, four, that's five, just, six, that's seven, just a eight. sample. That's not. Okay. Okay, you're right there. That's not what he used in his analysis. That's just a general mathematical thing. You're right. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Why? Why? I am. It convection sail. Uh, well, Barry is saying that if there are vortices, yes, yes. In, and, and there, uh, there are convection in convection, binar relay, they're, count, they're counter rotating. Yes, do we do we know this theory of convection cell? He's making a supposition. So if you had convection <laughs> currents, but that's and you not had the one six you around, you would get this result. That it's, it's it's all conjecture, but it's a starting point for understanding this. But I think the point is making, and maybe we should take it back to Barry as a comment, <coughs> is that the uh, Rayleigh, Bernard, Rayleigh, Rayleigh Bernard, Bernard convection forms also these hexagons. It's not the same. Well, there was a picture of that earlier. The but, that, but that's not what it, that's not what it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know what he means. Okay. I'll mention Barry. Yeah, mention the Barry mention. picture there. All right. Yeah. How, how, how do we get my okay my PowerPoint up? Thank you. Thank you. We're pressed for time and many people want to go